Hey everyone, it's Mandy from Garden, and today we're gonna do an assessment of these struggling strawberry plants. We're gonna talk about uh, what's wrong with them, why we think they're having those issues, and what we might do to fix it. So let's dive right in. So the first thing I do when I see a plant like this is an assessment of what's going wrong. So right out of the gate, I like to look at um, the leaf structure um, and really just dive into what do I see there. So I'm sure you can see pretty easily that there's a lot of dead and dying leaves. There's a lot of browning um, on the edges of the leaves. In good news, there is some new leaf growth, especially on this one. So that's good. We, we suspect the plant isn't um, completely dead. Um, and you can see this strawberry, both of these strawberry plants have sent out runners, um, which is also a, a good sign just in the sense that um, they're healthy enough to be attempting to propagate themselves, um, which gives me hope that we can go ahead and bring them back to life. Um, when I look at the leaves specifically, and especially on this plant, and we'll show you guys a close up of this, I notice right away that this plant has a pest issue and not just one pest issue, it has three pest issues. So it's got the mother load going on. What I can see just with my naked eye is one, the strawberry plant has spider mites. Um, two, the strawberry plant has aphids. And three, this strawberry plant has mealybugs. Um, and all three of those are going to uh, significantly harm the health of the plant um, because of course they're feeding on the plant. Um, and so, you know, why is that? Why is this plant suffering from all of these pest issues? In general, when a plant isn't at optimal health, which as you can just tell from looking at these plants, these are not in optimal health, dead, dead and dying plants attract disease and that's exactly what's happening here. So dying root structures, dying leaves, dying stems, plants don't have the defenses that they need to ward off pests. Um, so it's similar if you think about it, if you're stressed out and run down, you're more likely to get a cold. For a number of reasons, these strawberry plants are stressed out and run down and they have caught pests. Um, so that's definitely something that we're gonna have to um, address when we, when we look into the fixes of, of what we're gonna do for those. The second thing that I wanna talk about in our assessment um, is the roots. So what I'm actually gonna do is dump one of these plants out and we're gonna look at the root structure and see how they're doing. I'm gonna make a prediction right out of the gate. With a plant that is as stressed and sick as this is, I would be surprised to see long roots, vigorous, um, vigorous growth, um, and a really help root, healthy root structure. In general, if you see a dead and dying plant on top, you're getting a similar view down below. But let's take a look and see what's going on. And then that way we can address any root issues when we talk about our fixes uh, later on. So I'm gonna go ahead and dump this guy out. Um, and then we can all look at his root structure together. Um, one of the benefits of having, uh, or this strawberry plant being in a um, basket pot is that we can actually see some of the roots, so that's good. Um, if I just glancing, I can see that at least the roots have come down to about halfway almost to the bottom. There was at least a time some vigorous growth that they came out the sides here. But let's go ahead and dump it out and see what the rest of it looks like. Um, as part of our fix, we're, we're gonna be addressing soil and potting. So it's okay if, uh, to, to bring it out and, and re repot this plant. So I'm just gonna go ahead and shake off kind of um, the dirt. Oh, we got a worm hanging out in here. We like seeing that. Um, I don't know if you can see on there, there's a nice worm living in the pot. We've got a good living soil going here. Um, and as you can see, just to turn this, there are some really fine roots. I like that they're throughout, um, that they're throughout. They're not just concentrated in one area, which makes me think that the roots were able to get deep enough. The soil wasn't so heavy that the roots couldn't move down. So that's good. That's something that we want to see. Um, but the roots are really fine. They're breaking off really easy. And I do see some dead root matter. Um, like there, you can see that's a kind of a nice, vigorous root. Um, but there aren't a whole lot of ones that look like this guy. And that's what I want to see. Um, so this guy's definitely having issues down in its roots as well. Um, okay, so we've talked about the roots, we've talked about the, the leaves. Now let's talk about why they look like this. Um, and we went through one of the reasons the leaves are struggling is because they're covered in pests, and we know that's one of the reasons. 
The second reason that this strawberry plant or these strawberry plants might be struggling is because of the pH of the soil. So strawberries in particular like slightly acidic soil, um, typically a range of 5.3, 5.5, 5 all the way up to 6.5. Um, they can tolerate a more neutral soil, but they prefer a slightly acidic soil. Um, and so why is that? What, what makes an acidic soil good for a strawberry plant? So when strawberry plants are growing, slightly acidic soil allows them to have their optimal nutrient availability um, for uptake of those nutrients from the plant. So the acidic soil enhances the availability of essential nutrients um, like iron, manganese, phosphorus, things that the strawberry plant um, really needs in its growth stage. Um, and also an acidic soil increases the solubility of minerals, making them more available to the root structures to uptake, and then of course then more available for the plant to then use. Um, in addition, with um, soil acidity can affect the microbial population, and strawberry plants uh, prefer their, their, um, their soil slightly more acidic, so that's where the microbial population will best thrive for these plants. Um, and then lastly, um, the soil acidity can help with um, decreasing some soil-borne pathogens. They don't like, some soil-borne pathogens don't like slightly acidic soils, and so that's favorable to the strawberries as well. Um, so I suspect um, that these plants potentially did not have in a slightly acidic soil, which made it difficult for them to pull the nutrients that they needed out of that soil to then use to stay healthy, strong, and get good growth and, and also help fight disease. Um, my other hypothesis is potentially that there might have been some watering issues with these plants. Strawberry plants can be really easy to grow, but they're a little bit tricky in the sense that they want to stay moist, but they want to drain. So um, if you have a situation where water is allowed to pool at the bottom of your root structures, and it looks like our roots, you know, kind of at the very bottom there were kind of like crumbly and not very thick, they don't like that. They want to be able to drain um, the water all the way out while keeping the top um, somewhat moist. So oftentimes with strawberry plants, uh, people will put a um, straw um, around, the, around the plants or a rice hull, something that allows the moisture to stay in the top of the soil. Um, and actually there's a secondary benefit at the time of fruiting, um, those strawberries then sit on top of that dry medium and then they're less likely to bruise and, and to rot because they're not directly on the wet soil below. So uh, just kind of an additional benefit there by keeping your strawberries moist. Um, so watering might have been um, something that was going wrong with these plants as well. Another thing to consider um, that might have been an issue with these is lighting. So strawberries are considered a full sun plant. Um, and even though these ones are coming from an indoor environment, um, they can use about 12 hours of light. Uh, because of that, they don't want sudden changes um, in light that can stress the plant out or make it think it might be time to go into dormancy, which could change the, um, their output of leaves and, and um, flowers and of course berries uh, because they don't think it's the growing season. Um, so that's potentially an issue there too. Um, the other thing that I wanna consider that we talked a little bit about at the beginning is the soil. So strawberry plants are vigorous growers. They are producing lots of green leaves, they're trying to put out runners, they're producing flowers, hopefully lots of them, which then produce lots of berries. And what do plants need when they wanna grow and grow fast? They need lots of nitrogen. And if you don't have lots of nitrogen in the soil consistently during their growth phases, they're gonna have deficiencies and you'll see things like these yellowing of the leaves and um, them being less vigorous than they otherwise could be. So I suspect they didn't have as much nitrogen as they needed um, as well. Um, and then the kind of the last two things I want to address is uh, pruning. Um, so when you have a plant like this that is trying to do so much, right? It's trying to create a really big green canopy. It's trying to send out runners to propagate itself. It's trying to create flowers and berries, um, especially in the early growth stages. You want to make sure you're uh, in the beginning 
pruning out actually some of the flowers to allow the green canopy to grow big. And you can see in this plant, the green canopy is plenty big enough. Um, but then as the plant is large, you wanna trim additional runners because rather than focusing on the, um, on keeping kind of that main plant and its flowers and berries healthy and big, it's sending nutrients and energy out to these runners, which you want to stay in the plant. So I don't usually like to have more than one runner, especially if I'm gonna propagate later. Uh, if I see more than one, I go ahead and snip it off. Um, and that way that energy can stay in the main plant um, to keep it healthy and also have flower and fruit production. Um, so that's a big one. And then in addition, <laughs> something that I was obviously not happening with these plants um, is pruning out anything that is dead. Um, and these plants are just filled with dead leaves and dead stems. And as we mentioned earlier, that's a great place for pathogens and pests to go ahead and take hold and then start to spread to healthy, um, healthy parts of your plant. So you really wanna be on top of cleaning out any of that stuff just to really help keep those pathogens and, and pests at bay. Um, so I think, oh, the last thing I wanna talk about was um, with strawberries is winter um, and dormancy. So for your um, strawberry plants, they're perennials, which means they come back every year without having to be replanted, um, as long as obviously they don't, they don't die due to pest issues or, or uh, frost issues or things of that nature. Um, but most um, strawberry plants will benefit from a period of dormancy. Um, and this is usually when you allow the temperatures to drop. You don't ever want them to drop below freezing or there are other issues where you can get um, uh, frost issues on your plants. They don't like to, to go below freezing. Um, but usually somewhere, you know, between 32 and 50 um, is, you know, this kind of chiller effect and you want to reduce the light um, down to, a, you know, at least down to like only like eight hours a day. And that kind of tells the plant like it's time to be uh, not vigorously producing new leaves, not producing runners, certainly not fruiting and flowering, but rather it's just time um, to go ahead and kind of relax and, and kind of store up some energy and it will usually help um, then bring it into a stage that really has a lot of growth after you bring it out of that dormancy. So um, that could also be an issue here. These plants um, might just need to, uh, in addition to all the other things we've mentioned, may also be ready for a period of dormancy if they've been going um, throughout the, the spring, summer, and fall. Uh, so, all right, what we're gonna do next is we're gonna talk about how to fix all of these issues. Um, and we got some really great ideas on, on how we're gonna do it and hopefully get these things saved and back to producing delicious berries. Hey everyone, it's Mandy from Garden and I'm outside right now with those two kind of sickly looking strawberry plants uh, that we looked at earlier. And as a reminder, um, they're not looking great. They have a lot of dead and dying leaves. Their root structures look pretty good um, and they are covered in three types of pests aphids, mealybugs, and spider mites. So we're kind of doing a cool experiment here. Because strawberries are a type of plant that, um, you know, can appreciate a dormant period where you allow the temperatures to cool and allow a time of less light, um, we think that actually the best things to rehab these plants is to give them some time outdoors. Um, and lucky for us, uh, it is February uh, right outside of Boston in Massachusetts. Um, so it's a really kind of cool temperature right now, but it's not below freezing. Um, so we're gonna go ahead and leave these out, we think for about a week. Um, and we're gonna do one thing besides just kind of leave them in the ground here. We have um, some rice hulls and we're gonna use this as a, an insulation. So it can get below freezing at night, um, although it's not supposed to be too cold for the next week, but the rice hulls will act as a bit of an insulation layer. We'll trap in some of the moisture so they don't dry out if we have some really cold, dry, windy days. Um, so I, this is gonna be really basic. I'm just gonna go ahead and you can see some dirt mixed in, that's fine. I'm gonna take these rice hulls and just kind of lightly allow a little bit of the leaf matter to stick through the top here but just kind of lightly cover them. I'm giving them a nice little insulation. I'm gonna cover, oh look, got a, got a worm, a little Massachusetts worm there, doesn't realize it's winter, so that's great. Guy's going to work. Um, and so, you know, this is not only gonna allow the strawberry plants to go into dormancy, but it's gonna allow the natural ecosystem outside, that worm included, to go ahead and feast on all those bugs. So rather than having to hit these plants, um, with any sort of pesticides, 
we're gonna allow the environment out here, all the microorganisms that are already living in this soil to go ahead and start doing its job while the plants are in this dormancy phase. So they're gonna go a long way to helping us kick these pests. They might even take them all the way down. So when we bring the plants back in, we're hoping that we'll see little to no um, pests left on them. And then we can just focus on trimming them up, repotting them and bringing them out of dormancy. So stick with us as we do this little experiment. Um, we have high hopes for it, but uh, you know, you never know. So we'll take you on this journey. Uh, I'm gonna get some of the green out here and I've got a lot of this over here. We'll let some of this green poke out. Um, and you can see I got a nice insulation layer on the bottom. Let some of the green come out here a little bit. Um, and we'll take you with us to see if these plants um, do indeed lose their pests, stay alive, and make it to phase number two where we repot them.